Hi everyone. Uh, so my name is Raj. I work as a uh, technical evangelist for for Microsoft. Um, <coughs> so good to see you guys here. Turn up for a TypeScript talk. How many of you have uh, I've heard of TypeScript before coming for this talk? A good bunch of you. How many of you here have come to bash me up? <coughs> Hopefully nobody. Uh, so <coughs> you know what? I'll probably start off with a little uh, little video here. Uh, let's talk about JavaScript. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone know in JavaScript what array plus array is? Well, let me ask you this first. What should array plus array be? Empty array. I would also accept type error. Uh, that is not what array plus array is. No. Wrong. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> array plus array is empty string. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I think that's I think that's obvious to everyone. Uh, now, what what would array plus object be? This should obviously be type error because those are completely disparate types. It should be completely uh, obvious. Does anyone know what this is? Uh, no, close. No, far away. It's object. <laughs> right, right, nicely done. It's probably a same. Now, bit of course, because uh, this is plus, so you can flip the operands and the same thing comes out. So, if we do what? No, that's just an object. Uh, if you do object plus array, you should get exactly the same thing, which, as you can see, you do. <laughs> so, you know, all the mathematical and finally, uh, rules apply. the only one of these that's actually true is uh, because you know you add arrays, you get empty string. That doesn't make sense. But an object plus an object is actually not a number technically, <laughs> which is true, right? It's not a number. So this one's actually right. <laughs> And uh, exactly, right? Like, what is even going on in this lab? I just, I don't even understand what person with a brain in their head would think that any of this is a good idea. Okay, okay. Enough making fun of languages that suck. Let's talk about JavaScript. <laughs> if I say array.new16, uh, or just array16, I get an array of 16 things, which it represents as 16 commas, which is obvious. And uh, if I then join those with a string, then I get the string 16 times. This is actually the only line in this entire presentation that's reasonable. Uh, now, if I take that string and then add a one to it, it interprets uh, the one as, or, or casts the one to a string, and then we get wat one a bunch of times. Fine. Does anyone know what will happen if I subtract one from the string? <laughs> I'm assuming no one does. Let me. I'll give you a hint. Does does this help? <laughs> Does anyone know? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wet man. So uh, that was a little fun at the expense of JavaScript. Uh, but I guess the, the point of, you know, if you want to look at the whole video, there's a little bit of poking fun at Ruby as well in that video at the beginning. I skipped that. That's the URL if you want to take a look at it. Uh, <coughs> that was kind of the point of that little, little video. You know, uh, you know, I'm not sure how, how much, like I tried some of that stuff in a, uh, in a, in a node interactive in a REPL shell. Some of that stuff didn't work. It actually worked better than that. But I guess the point is uh, writing JavaScript at scale, right? If you're writing like a like a one file, hundred line JavaScript program, I guess that's completely fine because you remember everything, you know what all the state is, it's all in your head. If you're building an application at scale with you know potentially fifty, hundreds of different files that have dependencies on each other, things can quickly get out of control, right? And there are some good best practices that have you know that have kind of evolved in the industry which allow you to deal with this kind of complexity. Uh, you know, module patterns, right? How you can organize your JavaScript into different modules and then you can, you know, define interfaces kind of, and then you can, you know, make sure that you conform to that. <coughs> so this is kind of the problem that, uh, that as an industry, uh, it faces. And there are already some solutions that people have come up with, uh, you know, to deal with this. If the clicker works. Oh, there you go. So, um, so you know, these are some of the uh, popular uh, frameworks and tools that are already out there, right? So Google Web Toolkit for folks who are from a Java background and, you know, uh, don't want to get out of that environment but still want to do web development. You know, you have a tool for that. Script Shop is kind of the similar kind of thing for C Sharp folks, so folks who want to build C Sharp and be on the .NET platform and want to, you know, uh, have it compiled to JavaScript. Sorry. Oh, that's my IM. 
which insists on intruding. I should probably sign out of this. I still get embarrassing messages. All right, thanks. Um, so, you know, you have script shop or C sharp folks. CoffeeScript is a completely new language which also compiles to JavaScript. Uh, kind of has a Python esque, Ruby esque kind of syntax. So, if you are from, uh, you know, from that background, you'll probably appreciate CoffeeScript. But again, you know, you can avoid having to deal with JavaScript. Uh, <coughs> and then you have uh, Dart, which is like a completely different take on, I mean, it's, it's a from scratch take, right? From Google, which is a new programming language. Uh, you know, it's basically let's just throw everything out that's already out there and let's start from scratch because the web is broken, JavaScript is broken, it's beyond repair, cannot be fixed, we have to do something different. <coughs> and that's Dart. Right? So, uh, so these are some of the approaches that are already out there. Uh, so, so do we need another one? Right? So that was kind of the, the point of JavaScript. Uh, so if you want to draw a parallel with the options that we saw in the previous slide, you know, it's probably closest to CoffeeScript. Right? So CoffeeScript is a language that you develop your applications in and that compiles to JavaScript. So TypeScript is exactly the same idea. So you you build your applications in TypeScript and then that compiles to JavaScript. The point, the difference is that TypeScript is not a completely different language. So you can th imagine TypeScript as being a set of, uh, you know, some syntax sugar, right? Some glorified syntax built on top of JavaScript and that compiles to JavaScript. Now what that means is all JavaScript code that is out there today is already TypeScript code, right? So you can just take, a, you know, J JavaScript code, put in a .ts file and compile it, you know, you probably wouldn't want to do that, but if you do that, that just works because uh, TypeScript is a superset of it, right? So all of JavaScript is valid TypeScript. And then there are some syntactical extensions which have been built to make the job of building large applications, right? Applications that, that are at scale uh, simple, right? So <coughs> it's, a, it's, a lang it's a language for application scale JavaScript development. Uh, it compiles to JS, works pretty much everywhere. JavaScript works uh, in all browsers, all operating systems, completely open source. Uh, it's hosted on GitHub. You can look at the source of the compiler itself. Uh, you can fork it, you know, do what you want. Uh, <coughs> so TypeScript starts with JavaScript, right? So all JavaScript code is type, TypeScript code. And that kind of really helps, right? As opposed to say something like Dart. So if you want to use existing libraries, right? So if you want to use jQuery, if you want to use prototype, and there's a, there's a vast corpus of, you know, JavaScript kind of notorious for that, right? Pretty much every day somebody is putting out a new framework. <coughs> Yesterday I got in the mail that you know Meteor has shipped a new version of their framework, right? So it's like it's like crazy to keep up with keep up with stuff. So uh, should probably stop using the clicker. Okay, there you go. So um, <coughs> so it starts with JavaScript. All your existing libraries just work, and it enhances with some extensions, optional static typing, right? How you can define interfaces, modules, uh, and then of course you know all of this you know you feed it to a compiler and out. Uh, you know, you get JavaScript as the output, right? And that pretty much runs everywhere, not only in browsers. I mean, as everybody knows, it runs on, on Node, on, runs on Windows. So you can build Windows applications, Windows 8 applications with JavaScript. Uh, so what do you get for this effort that you put in in building your application TypeScript? You get great tooling support. So stuff that uh, you know, static type language developers are familiar and used to, right? So stuff that you get in the IDEs. So refactoring, uh, you know, navigating your code intelligently, IntelliSense, syntax completion, syntax coloring, all of that you get great tooling support. Uh, and uh, one of the core goals of TypeScript was that, you know, the TypeScript language syntax should align with the next upcoming revision of the ECMAScript standard, right? So right now, the in-production version of the ECMAScript standard is ECMAScript version 5, right? And version 6 is kind of uh, in flux, like it's still being figured out. So TypeScript syntax is uh, ECMAScript syntax. So it's kind of, you know, a, a peak of the future, right? So you kind of get to see what, uh, I mean, the, the requirement for writing applications at scale is there today. So TypeScript allows you to do that. And, uh, and it produces idiomatic JavaScript, JavaScript that you would write, right? JavaScript that you would hand code. So, uh, so that's what it produces. Um, <coughs> so more of the same, uh, same thing. I guess the best thing to do is go and take a look at it. So what, what, uh, what does develop in TypeScript uh, look and feel like, right? So uh, some of the things, obviously there's not a full tutorial on TypeScript as a language. So there are a bunch of things that it, it brings to the table. Optional static typing. So basically you can decorate your variables with static type information. Uh, you can define classes, you can define modules, you can define interfaces, you can define lambda functions, basically a little terse syntax for, uh, you know, a more concise syntax for, for functions. <coughs> and you can have optional parameters and, uh, and, and so forth. So, uh, so the place to go and get TypeScript is typescriptlang.org, right? So you can, uh, you can go there, you can download it, play with it. Uh, there's also a, a playground here where you can kind of, uh, you know, uh, experiment with the language itself. 
in a two pane view, you would type script here, it produces a JavaScript that you see, which is kind of interesting, right? So, so for example, here, right? So I can, I can go and say, you know, var foo colon number. So that's the, uh, that's the static typing uh, part of it. I was, the optional typing part of it that I was telling you about. Let me just uh, launch, zoom it here. So for example, what I've done here is I've done foo, Normally, normally you say var foo equals 10, right? So here I've said var foo colon number equals 10. So basically here I've associated the type number with, uh, with that variable. And on the right hand side you can see what it generates, right? So that's regular JavaScript. So, you know, for example, if I say foo equals ABC, now normal JavaScript, this would work completely fine, right? Uh, now what happens here is it flags that as an error, right? So you, you see that it is, you should have gotten a little squiggly here, uh, which for some reason is not coming now. So, uh, and also you can see that when I hover over the variable, it tells me that it's a number and I'm assigning a string to that. So, in your, uh, one of the ways that you would probably do TypeScript development is, uh, you know, you would write TypeScript code. So, for example, let's say, uh, I don't think I'll have time to write code here, already 10 minutes up. Uh, so, let me open a, you know, a simple hello script here. So, there are some, you know, some, uh, some of the common TypeScript features have been used here, right? So, uh, <coughs> Basically, there is a there is a module. You can think of this as the same way as, you know, how we would. I mean, ultimately, it just translates into a JavaScript object, right? With a, with a global object with foo. How do you disable syntax away? Anybody know? Sublime. Ah, there we go. Thank you. Much better. So, uh, <coughs> so here we have, uh, you know, basically a module called foo has been defined. Inside that we have a definition of a class. I all this should be self-explanatory. We have the, we have a syntax construct here for defining a constructor which takes uh, two parameters, a number and a string. And you can see that, you know, you're able to decorate each of your variable declarations with a type uh, specification, right? And here we have a method called moo and that returns a number and we are, you know, writing something to the console and so on and so forth. And then here is the code that uses that. So I can declare a variable and designate that as foo colon, foo dot bar, right? So that's basically the bar class inside, uh, inside foo. And then I'm making an instance of it and then I'm calling, calling that method, right? So once you, have a, once you have a file like this, so there's a compiler called TSC. Uh, so you can say TSC uh, hello dot TS, right? So you just compile that and uh, that generates uh, hello dot JS for you. So let's see what, uh, what hello.js looks like. So that's what uh, that code translated to, right? And this should be very familiar JavaScript code. So we basically have an immediate function which defines the, which defines your, uh, the module called foo. And then you have, uh, uh, you know, you have the constructor function being defined in, inside here as, you know, this is your constructor function. And that's what is returned from this immediate function here. And that gets associated with the, with the namespace. And you have the prototype extended with the definition of moo and so on and so forth, right? So, uh, so, so it generates JavaScript that you would anyway have handwritten, right? Good JavaScript that, uh, that you would have handwritten. So, uh, and also you would have noted that, you know, all of that type information that the type decoration that you gave here and all that, all that has disappeared here, right? So here, this is regular JavaScript, no type here. So this is all in the, in, in compile time. So for instance, this here takes a number, right? So if, uh, if I pass a, pass a string there, right? Then what happens when I, uh, when I compile that thing? So, you know, basically it tells you that supplied parameters do not match, blah, blah, blah. So uh, that's, that's the benefit, right? So a, a line of code like this in JavaScript, you know, there would have been no error, right? It would have just run and it would have manifested itself as a runtime issue, right? And depending on how complex your script is, complex your script is, you know, it would have been, uh, you know, easy or difficult uh, to, to find that. All right. So, uh, <coughs> so this is just a, you know, kind of taste of what you can do. So I would encourage folks to go type out stuff here and, uh, and play with it. For example, uh, this, it's kind of funny here. Like this, there's a whole ray tracer code that has been written here. And I think I lost connectivity. Uh, there is an issue. Okay. So, um, so, f you know, you can just go to typescript lang.org and, uh, oh, there you go. So uh, hit run, and you see that that whole image has been rendered, you know, on a canvas tag completely from script. It's a ray tracer that has been implemented in TypeScript, so uh, a non-trivial application, and uh, you can see the corresponding JavaScript that's generated here. You know, it's 
So this playground is kind of fun to play with because it's kind of real time. You can type TypeScript on the left and it generates a JavaScript. And it's kind of uh, interesting, right? So basically this, this web application embeds the TypeScript compiler in it, right? So the TypeScript language itself has been written in TypeScript. Uh, so if you go to the install location, you'll find the entire uh, JavaScript version of the TypeScript compiler, right? So you can simply include that in a web app and you can actually do, uh, you know, type analysis of, ja uh, of TypeScript code or even JavaScript code uh, dynamically, right? So, I think that's pretty pretty interesting. Some of some of the possibilities that opens up. Anyway, so uh, so that's uh, a very very brief uh, kind of. Uh, oh, I still have four minutes. Probably, you guys want to look at more stuff. Uh, for example, uh, lambda methods is something that I find very interesting. For example, I can say var foo equals. So this is how you normally do functions, right? Uh, let me say hello at foo. Now. Or maybe you know, or maybe we want to uh, you know find, write a function that uh, that tells you whether a number is even or not, right? So I might say you know var is even. I might say function n, and then I might say return n percentage two is zero, right? So this is how you typically write a uh, is even function. So with TypeScript, there is a terser syntax that you can write. So you can say var is even equals uh, you can say n. And uh, it's, a, it's called a fat arrow, and then you can simply write an expression that would evaluate as the as the return value for that, right? So, uh, so if you see on the right-hand side, right? So it has generated. So this is the generated version of that. So it's exactly the same as what I, what I hand wrote, uh, but you get uh, terser syntax for this, and this is especially useful in cases where you have to uh, uh, you know pass a pass a function in line, and it's a lot of typing. Right? It just saves you some typing. That's 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 all it does. Uh, and there are other interesting things that you can do. Uh, you know, for example, you can define an interface, right? So, for example, let's say you want to create a function where any object that is passed to that function needs to have a specific shape. And what I mean by specific shape is it needs to have a certain set of properties. Those properties have to have a certain type, uh, and so on and so forth. So, how would you how would you enforce that, right? In JavaScript, there's no way of enforcing that. Uh, here, you can define a, you can define an interface. So, I can say I foo, and then here I can do all kinds of things. I can say n1 is a number, s1 that insists on signing in uh, is a string. I can say something is a callback. I can say, you know, uh, and that returns a number. So basically, this is an interface which uh, needs, so for example, an object that conforms to this interface would be uh, something like this, right? And n is 10, s2 is uh, la, and, uh, and cb is basically uh, any function that returns, that uh, takes a parameter and returns some number, right? So that, that would be an object that conforms to that particular implementation. And uh, the benefit here is if I uh, define some piece of code where I say function blah needs some object whose type is ifoo, then anytime I pass something that is not an ifoo, I get a get a error, right? So here, for example, I can pass o here, right? I can say blah of o, and that works. Now, if I, uh, if I make this a string, let's say, Right. Uh, so there you go. There's an error. Supplied parameters do not match any signature of call target because basically it's trying to match the shape of this thing with uh, with that interface. Right. So uh, so that kind of is the that kind of is the idea. And you can see that an interface completely disappears in the in the compiled code. <laughs> right. The interface definition is just gone. There's absolutely no uh, notion that there's. An, so that's a completely type uh, static type feature here. Uh, Uh, but in your code, you can imagine, you know, the value that this thing provides, right? So anytime, uh, so this this is an error, right? And the compiler finds that for you, right? And and anytime you find an error during a compile at the compile stage, is a gazillion man hours of effort saved, right? So so that's what that's what TypeScript kind of gives you. Uh, so with that, I guess I'll jump into questions. Uh, so if you want to go get this, you can go get this at typescriptlang.org. Uh, feel uh, open for questions. Yes. Um, so I have a couple of questions. One, does it do type inference? Type inference? Does right. it infer type, or I have to give type everywhere? Right. And your second question? Uh, so go ahead. Okay. All right. Yeah. So uh, so does it do type inference? So yes, it does type inference. Right. So uh, that's kind of uh, that's kind of what is kind of uh, great about it. So let's say you have defined a, a variable as a certain type, and then you return that from a function. Then the the compiler infers that what is the function's return type by walking that. Right, and that and this goes to n levels. So yes, it, uh, 
So with a, with a very minimal amount of decoration, right, you get a, a lot of value. Okay. And does it support generics for collections? Not yet. Okay. Not yet. Okay. Okay. The other question is, like static typing also plays a big role at runtime in hmm. the optimization of the code. Right. So we are not getting that. We are, are not getting plans that. Of Introducing some uh, kind of annotations via comments or something that the engine Absolute. can make. Absolutely, absolutely, you're right. So this is completely a build time, compile time, tooling thing. It's not a runtime thing. So there's no plan to. Uh, that, yeah. So build your entire thing from scratch in in that language. So here you get to kind of use the existing ecosystem of JavaScript uh, code that is already out there. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, can we have static members inside class? Yes. Uh, you can have static members inside the class. So there's a syntax for that. So when you define a class, you can say static blah, colon, some type, okay. and then you can simply say that class name dot that member. Okay. And uh, do we have closure support? Yes. There is. So, this, so TypeScript is JavaScript. So all that you can do in JavaScript, all of that okay, translation is available. Is in there a, any better way of uh, defining closure? Basically? So you're, you're talking, probably you're referring to the, this problem. Yeah. Yeah. So, so here it does the expected things, right? So if you define a class and you have your methods, that this would always point to the, point to the class. Okay. But, uh, Another thing that TypeScript allows you to do is, uh, you're not stuck in the static world. So anytime you want to, you know, so JavaScript is dynamic, and there are some benefits to that, right? It's not all bad. I mean, it's, it's very powerful. You just need to know how to use it. So there, is, there, are, there are mechanisms in language to dip into JavaScript if you want to do that, right? So if you want to declare a type which is, declare a variable which does not have a type, then you can do that. So there's a, there's a type called any. So you can say var o colon any. Then this is just like a JavaScript var blah, right? So you can do that, and you can do everything that you can do in JavaScript. And uh, can we specify uh, return types for uh, function? For functions? Yeah. Yes. So just like we said var o colon number, you can say function blah, and then close bracket colon return type. So if I am returning a string object, then it will tag an error. You can say colon string. Yes. Okay. For functions. Yeah. Can I mix and match TypeScript and JavaScript? Like Absolutely. So in the same TS source file, you can have a bit of TypeScript, a bit of JavaScript. They can call each other. Yes. So uh, I have a couple of questions. One, uh, uh, it seems, at least from the surface, that uh, as long as you write, you have your entire code in TypeScript, hmm. uh, you get to uh, uh, use the leverage of Correct. the type safety. Correct. When you start using the third-party libraries or modules, Correct. Uh, and they start interacting with that, you lose. Uh, is the same problem you have with the scripting Great languages. Question. Great you, question. You lose the context. Right. So, so there is uh, there is support for that. So basically, uh, what we just saw in that very brief example was I created one .ts file and I compiled, compiled that to JS, right? So there is another kind of file that you can write, uh, a .d.ts, which is basically a file of declarations, right? So Microsoft has already, you know, the, the, the TypeScript team has already put together a declaration file for jQuery and uh, for Node. Uh, so uh, all you need to do is in your application include the declaration file, then you get the entire type checking for that, that whole library. So this becomes just a matter of the community putting together uh, declaration files for all the popular libraries that you need, right? So for jQuery, it's there. For Node, it's there. For the DOM, it's there, right? For the DOM itself. So when you say document by ID, you need to pass a string, right? So if you want type checking for that, you, so that that is there. So you you, uh, you rely on a publisher to publish Correct. the okay. Correct. Uh, either it's community driven or Microsoft pitches in or we need to do it ourselves. Correct. Correct. Okay. Uh, the other thing is. Uh, uh, for, for people who are moving from a world of sequential work to an async work, hmm. uh, JavaScript poses a lot of mental puzzles right. as you start writing spaghetti code. Correct. So, uh, and I see a promise here because you're taking it to the static world again. Right. So, does TypeScript give any chance of making that little bit more elegant? Yeah, I mean, not yet. So, for example, one of the lang one of the features that I would absolutely love to have in TypeScript is so C# -sharp has this feature of uh, await and uh, async and await. Right, that really, really simplifies uh, uh, asynchronous development. That would be a great feature to come. It's not there yet. So right now, there are libraries that you can use for that. So CommonJS has support for something called as promises. You can use promises to kind of make it a little bit easier to deal with uh, uh, sequential asynchronous calls. Right? Uh, so yeah, so right now, you probably have to stick with, uh, with libraries. TypeScript language itself does not have a support for async code like, like that. Right, so there's a question was, uh, what IDs are we going to support for TypeScript? So this release has obviously support for, in fact, I didn't get to show that. So uh, Visual Studio has great support for TypeScript. You get all the IntelliSense, syntax checking, all that. Uh, the, the syntax file has been uh, uh, created for Sublime, the Sublime editor, uh, for VI and for Emacs, uh, for Emacs. So, uh, so those are the editors that are supported right now. Uh, 
but uh, you know so again i guess the community is kind of expected kind of put together stuff for uh, for other ides uh, the compiler itself is available right so you can use that to build any kind of static uh, analysis tool that you want to build so uh, yeah uh, how do we dynamically de debug this uh, do we need to debug in javascript or can we see a debugger in TypeScript? Right. good good question so uh, this is a kind of a standard problem with any any transpiler right uh, so so there is a project called source map where uh, you know you can essentially generate uh, uh, have the have the compiler generate uh, another file which basically provides information to the debugger that maps your JavaScript code to TypeScript code so that you can debug in TypeScript. Now this is something that's not out there yet, uh, but that's you know probably we'll see that coming out in the. So in fact the TypeScript compiler has a undocumented source map compiler flag. I've not tried it yet, but I think it's it's not available yet officially. So it should it should come out. So that's that's definitely priority one feature for the next release. Yeah, so uh, I believe TypeScript is from Microsoft, right? So uh, in at least in I10 or maybe then, what is the future? Are are you guys are planning for, you know, getting TypeScript ran directly on the I browsers? No. Is there I anything like that? I mean, uh, I would not think so. I would not think that TypeScript would directly run in the browser because that's that's not the approach here at all, right? Mm -hmm. Here, the thing to remember here is TypeScript is completely static. Right, it's a it's a compiler uh, check for you. It's a, it's additional rich development experience and so forth from the editor, from uh, all that. Right, so that's the approach. At the runtime, all of this disappears. Right, you you get idiomatic JavaScript at runtime. That's that's pretty much it. Yes. So uh, type TypeScript language has a specification document on its website, a language specification document. Yes. So if you go to TypeScript uh, lang.org, you can look at the spec as well. Okay. Uh, so currently, TypeScript uh, is uh, targeting ECMAScript uh, 5, 5 specification. So there's a compiler flag. You can have it target generate ECMAScript 3 code or ECMAScript 5 code. Okay. So another question is like uh, right now you are putting in the EDM ECMAScript 6 currently in the TypeScript. Correct. So later on when ECMA, ECMAScript is released, we have same EDMs there. So will will not there be a conflict for us that now there is a TypeScript so way of doing modules and ECMAScript 6 way of doing modules. Right. So so it's a it's a it's a preview. That's why it's called TypeScript. It's a preview release right now, right? It's not a it's not a final production release yet. And that's part partly because ECMAScript itself is uh, is seeing a lot of flux. Right. So the goal, the design goal for TypeScript is definitely to conform to ECMAScript 6 syntax today. Right. So uh, so as the language as the ECMAScript spec evolves, you should see TypeScript evolve as well. Thank you. Sure.